So my name is uh, Yasser Pahla. I'm a professor in the electrical and computer engineering department. Uh, I direct the Connected and Autonomous Vehicle Research Lab uh, at UCF. Um, so at our lab, um, the kind of general high level topic that uh, we're working on is what we call cyber physical network systems. Um, however, uh, most of the research actually is uh, in two areas. Uh, one that I call cooperative AI for autonomous vehicles, and that is basically around uh, learning-based perception and um, uh, decision-making or planning for automated vehicles. Um, and this is basically the topic that I will be uh, kind of focusing on today. And we also have um, uh, parallel projects in wireless communications and connected vehicle technologies. Now, this is basically related to advanced driver assistance systems for safety and efficiency, and uh, in general, you know, vehicle to infrastructure uh, based communication, including, you know, the new 5G, cellular V2X, DSRC technologies, and so on. So, just um, because I will not be talking about this topic today, I would like to mention that uh, our recent work in this uh, area actually has been adopted in two of the standards by. Society of Automotive Engineers. So this is the these are basically the vehicle uh, standards. So uh, what uh, what's expected is that within the next uh, couple of years, uh, the new production vehicles in the U.S. would actually implement uh, some of the algorithms that we have designed, uh, you know, in their uh, communication parts. Um, so for that, actually, we're working with a bunch of uh, OEMs like uh, Ford, Honda, Toyota, and then uh, uh, GM. So our most I mean, recent work actually has been with Ford and Honda. We also have projects uh, with US DOT and you know supported by NSF. All right. Now on this topic of cooperative AI. So um, first, let me actually start with uh, just taking us back a little bit uh, about autonomous driving. So I think by now everybody is kind of pretty familiar with it. You know, um, maybe twenty years ago. This was new to, to a lot of us, but this is actually not a new thing. So this ad here is, I think, from the 50s. It was a General Motors ad in which they actually said that uh, future vehicles would be controlled, like their steering and speed, by electronics that are in the road. And um, that was, you know, the vision. So it's been almost 70 years, and that vision is still not realized. And um, you know, uh, question is actually why. So looking and you know, some might ask, uh, what about, for example, Tesla, right? There's this autopilot that Tesla has put on their vehicles and so on. Um, so there are actually many systems today that are being deployed as a standard features in a lot of cars, especially like with respect to uh, automated features or ADAS, right? Those are that, you know, the collision avoidance, collision warning, things of that kind. Now, although these are appearing, but still fully automated systems are going to be a few years away. You know, uh, all companies sort of, sort of um, tone down their optimism on this. So this is going to probably take at least another five years for, uh, for us. Now, what are the challenges? Actually, a lot of the challenges are within what we call, I mean, the perception and decision-making parts. And that's because the bar for these systems is actually pretty high. So, uh, we cannot have you know an autonomous system to crash even like you know once uh, once a year, right? So something like that is unacceptable, and because of that, these things are basically pretty uh, hard to kind of create. Now to address these issues, uh, one of the projects that we've been looking at was um, how to uh, augment perception using information that could actually be shared over a wireless network. So uh, what we actually looked at was, um, so the main issue in perception is that the range is limited for a lot of these sensors and they suffer from occlusion. Like if something obstructs the view, you cannot detect the object. Now to overcome this, people have been working on methods that, for example, if you have two vehicles, they could process the scene if they detect objects that one, the other one is not detecting, they can share that information with each other. However, the problem is in many cases, both of them are going to be unable to detect, for example, if the object is very far. Um, an alternative would have been to just share whatever you're collecting, like all your LiDAR data, all your camera data, and so on. But that is actually, even with uh, upcoming like communication technologies, is impossible. 
So our approach actually was different. We said, you know, instead of sharing what you have seen, how about we put the brains together and see together, right? So we call that uh, cooperative cognition where the neural networks that are actually processing a scene, they work together rather than separately analyzing the scene and reporting on what they have seen. So uh, this method uh, basically required that we develop what we call a feature aggregation uh, mechanism where the two um, neural networks would, or, or multiple neural networks, doesn't have to be two, multiple of them would share uh, some of the feature maps from the latent space. And then we uh, designed algorithms for kind of aggregating and uh, uh, putting them together and processing in order to detect objects. We have actually done that with uh, LiDAR data, as you can kind of see here, vehicle one and vehicle two here are missing, for example, this green object here. While, uh, and so any like cooperative perception and sharing of the detection results would not solve this. While, you know, with uh, kind of working together at the neural network feature level, they could actually detect this. So what we have shown was you could improve uh, almost like by 30% the undetected objects, uh, the detection of those undetected objects. Now, moving on to um, next step in kind of cooperative uh, vehicles was to work on the decision-making part. So uh, we started actually looking at how uh, automated vehicles could cooperate on the road so that both of them or like multiple of them are safer in their operation. Uh, after you know working a little bit on this, we realized uh, you know that there's situations are so many, especially when human drivers are also involved, that you know you cannot really go with the traditional rule-based systems, and that is actually still uh, what is uh, a lot of you know state of the art is. Uh, we started looking at reinforcement learning and designed uh, systems based on that and trained them so that these vehicles could actually work together. And then we came across another issue, then that was that um, human drivers are also involved, right? So to address that issue, we uh, proposed this new concept of altruistic cooperative driving, where um, an autonomous vehicle is also mindful of the fact that there are other uh, human drivers on the road, and they can actually help them in that driving. So um, uh, our reinforcement learning methods actually were trained based on this, and we tested them on you know, several scenarios. I'm going to show you, you know, some of the results so far. So, um, let's go here. so for example, if you look at uh, a normal case where an autonomous driver is egoistic, so you'll come across this scenario where, you know, a human driver driven vehicle may actually be unable to merge. So let's just repeat that scenario. Uh, so the human driver, and you might actually have seen this scenario a lot on the road, that other vehicles don't let you, you know, merge in the, in the highway. Now, what we did was we changed how this, uh, or basically changed our uh, training uh, parameters and uh, the objectives basically for reinforcement learning and managed to train this autonomous vehicle to kind of cooperate with the human driver. So you can kind of see that it slows down, lets the human driver to come in front, and then it speeds up to catch up. So if you actually look at this behavior, this is something that emerged out of the reinforcement learning. This is not programmed. Now, this actually, uh, we have even seen more complex uh, behaviors in this scenario. Like you can see here that this autonomous vehicle does uh, first it slows down to allow the other one to merge, and then it also does a lane change. So all of these are kind of appearing automatically as a result of the training and scenarios that we're putting into the uh, reinforcement learning approach. Now, um, this research is still going on and uh, basically at this point, our near term goal is uh, to kind of, you know, find funding to continue on this line because this is a very complex problem. Still, there are like many uh, corners that we have not touched. This is a collaborative project with uh, Stanford University and University of California, Santa Barbara. Um, on that, we are also developing uh, hardware platforms like what we call Escape. This is a small scale cooperative autonomous vehicles. So these are one fifth scale uh, vehicles that are high speed. They can go up to 60 miles an hour. And we're testing them at a, uh, you know, a running track at UCF. Uh, uh, another project that we're you know, pushing at the same time is a simulator VR enabled that actually allows us to see what the driver uh, might experience in, in these scenarios. Uh, there's also a uh, Gem Polaris uh, 
vehicle that we have uh, recently purchased and uh, we're instrumenting it. And it actually shares the software and all the component, a lot of components with the smaller vehicles because you know, the small vehicle is actually kind of very realistic. Now, longer term, um, this whole uh, idea of cooperative autonomous vehicles could actually be seen in the light of autonomous systems. And in particular, we're looking at things, for example, like urban air mobility, because that is also another area that um, uh, that could benefit basically both for co from cooperative perception and cooperative uh, decision making. Uh, and generally speaking, uh, what we are doing here actually fits within the general area of cooperative altruistic robotics, where uh, basically is the focus of our department, the robotics part of it. And um, uh, and basically, you know, we're trying to kind of build a uh, large program around that. So um, on that, you know, I'll uh, end my presentation and I'll be happy to take any questions.